Do you think racism is the biggest issue right now in the world? It only becomes an issue when an incident related to it happens. The biggest issue of discrimination happening in the world right now is sexism. Being judged based on your gender or gender preference. I've seen it one too many times. Right? You can't uh, you can't joke about it. It's the thing you can't joke about. But being gay, being lesbian, most people most people use them as jokes. Don't you know that? Well, using not just women but LGBTQs as jokes is a form of sexism. These days, it's no longer a wish, no longer an issue against women. But of course, there's the LGBTQs, the LGBTQIA's, to be specific. They are the ones being uh, being prejudiced by sexists right now. I, for one, well, I got I got gay friends. Okay. I got gay and lesbian friends. But I don't I don't use them as. Uh, I don't use them as uh, jokes. I don't undermine their sexuality. I don't even uh, I don't even go on blame mode on why they uh, why they're like that. Because I'm not a sexist, basically. Over the years, I've uh, learned to respect the genders and gender preferences of others. Okay, because that's what sexism is all about these days it's not just it's not just your gender that can be attacked but the gender preference it's still the same it's still sexism working uh, at its dirt doing its dirty work so if you think that sexist sexism is no longer uh, a fad think again when you prejudice someone of another gender Bottom line, you're a sexist. And you're even worse than a racist. Racism only happens when someone from a, someone from a, from a minority is aggrieved. But sexism happens all the time. It may not be it may not be uh, reported in the news or you don't see any you don't see that much articles about it online. It's there. It is always there. Racism may disappear, but not sexism. So you would rather, well, avoid being a sexist more than a racist. Racism is not the issue. Again, I repeat, sexism is an even bigger issue. Sexism is uglier than racism. Those social media posts before well, before the pandemic hit that people would flex their money their cars their houses even their own well, even their own bodies okay just so everybody that uh, they've been doing something with their lives they're successful okay Believe it or not, okay, half of those posts aren't true. Okay. Now I don't know about the bodies. Okay, they're flexing their, flexing their, uh, their rib abs. Their, uh, their, their, well, for the women, their sex, their, their sexy bodies. For the guys, there, right? You can't fake that. Okay, I know. But when it comes to showing off money cars big houses anyone can fake that right only probably two to three percent actually own the cars or the, the cars cars the houses or the money they flaunt on social media <clears throat> but that's not the point my point is this can we just 
can't we just be successful by without uh, well without flaunting our wealth our success you know what we can it's called frugal living right I've I've known frugal living even Way, even way before I decided to get into network marketing or even get into well uh, giving branding advice giving my opinion becoming a youtuber becoming a social media influencer <clears throat> because that has been that has been taught to me by well by both sides of my family my, mo my mother's and father's side especially my father's side there's something wrong okay there is nothing wrong with frugal living. Okay? There's nothing wrong with being frugal. I'm not going to take myself an example as an example right now. I'm going to take Warren Buffett as an example. We all know he was America's richest man five years ago. Right, right now, uh, well, I think he still is. I think he still is. I no, no. Uh, he's no longer America's richest man, but he is one of the one of the richest men in the world. He's a multi-billionaire. The Oracle from Omaha, as they, as they call him. Despite being a multi-billionaire, Warren Buffett still lives in the house he bought around 1958. He still lives there. I've seen a picture of his home, and it's, wow, it's very suburban, very middle class. Okay? And to think he's, he's a multi-billionaire, right? And to think he's a multi-billionaire. He still lives in that house. Why can't we be just like him? Okay? He still lives frugally despite being a uh, multi-billionaire. A uh, multi-billionaire. Okay, I, I, I gotta correct myself. I gotta correct myself on that all the time. He's that rich guy who still lives frugally. If he can do it, so can we. Right? I've done it. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not exactly rich yet, but hey, it's a it's a goal and a dream of mine. But I still live frugally, and I'm a content creator and a social media influencer because I know not just the uh, the financial value of uh, of live of, of frugal living. I also understand the psychology and the emotional stability it brings right I'm about to wash the dishes right here it's part of my it's part of my chores as a as a member as a member of this household right? and a few hours ago I just did my laundry see if you're a network marketer like me you gotta live frugally right the tendency of network marketers even before even during my time was to live lavishly okay? get that fancy car they always wanted get the um, pay the down payment for the house of their dreams even have well even flash money on social media flash their earnings on social media sakit na yan ng network marketing dito sa Pilipinas. Okay. It's been a disease even not just in not just here in my country but also around but also in, uh, in most parts around the world where network marketing where network marketing is uh, is well is doing well. Can't we just live frugally despite uh, well even if we become, even if we, even if we become successful rich or not all right we are in a crazy time right now we are in confusing times we are in the most unreal of times right now we're a pandemic for God's sakes is it about time to learn how to live frugally I'm going to make another bold prediction so that I can so that I can encourage all of you to do the same frugal is the new normal right and it will continue to be that way in 2021 right now frugal is the new normal the 
just did the dishes. I'm going to make another. Uh, I'm gonna make a bolus entry of sorts. Well, I my mind just suddenly went to the time that I was at a. That was looking for a job. That was around early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. Ah, uh, no, early to mid 2000s actually. And they would always tell us that. Uh, you should always make a first impression if you're if you're a job seeker right now you know what I mean <laughs> so always make that first impression well that is that was very true 20 years ago these days it's not especially in these trying times okay? in these uh, in these pandemic times there I mentioned that word I mentioned that word again. Well, it's true that you should make a first impression. Okay. But the problem with that is we have been conditioned to focus more on our external appearance to make a first impression. I don't know where that I don't know where that notion came from. Okay. But for me, to make a first impression, you have to say the right words. You have to be in the proper mindset. Because, well, people sometimes get it already. The moment you open your mouth, the moment you make some actuations, the moment you, well, the moment you say your piece, bottom line, people will get it. That will be their first impression of you. If they, if the person you're talking to is smart enough, what you're wearing that day doesn't matter anymore. It's what you said, it's what you think, it's what's right here. Okay. <clears throat> so what well, Okay, if you're a, if you're a job seeker, if you're a job seeker right now, well, here's my advice to you. Don't focus much, don't focus very much on what you should wear to a, to a job interview. Okay? What you should wear to well, to a client call if you're a salesman. What you should wear to uh, a business presentation if you're a network marketer. What you should wear to a meeting if you're if you're a successful home and home business entrepreneur or network marketer. What you should focus on is what your what what your mouth is how your mouth opens. What words it, what words it utters what's coming out here and what's coming out here that's what's important that that will that will give other people their first impression of you all right yung mga kailangan maganda din sa time mo you got to of course you got to smell good all right you got to smell good then you got to dress for dress for success come on success is not superficial Right? Success isn't a superficial thing. It's deeper than that. Alright? So, yeah. That'll be, my, that'll be my advice to some of you. Some of you are, who are into job seeking. Some of you are, who, are sales, who are sales professionals right now. Making a first impression depends solely on what you have in here in here and in here okay so for the uh, the old school uh, the old school concept of uh, first impressions here's my rebuttal for it first impressions are for job seekers all of us know that we're 
five probably six months into a black swan event okay a lot of changes will happen after all this has been said and done so all of this has what you call this has boiled over for me it's safe to make predictions okay because we are in a black swan event this is an unforeseen event I'm I'm very sure. You you now know you now know how to use that delivery app, that food delivery app, that grocery delivery app, that um, how to email the government for your papers, on how to do Zoom meetings, how to do Zoom appointments, all right? If you're into sales, how to do conference. Uh, conference presentations like well, network mark if you're in the network marketing you know what I'm talking about <clears throat> with all of that with with you knowing all of that okay you don't need a mall okay you don't exactly need a mall to to do all that okay how can you do face-to-face -face presentations okay we're in a community quarantine Okay, my country, at least, is in a community quarantine. Okay. You can't do. No can do. So, well, I'm going to make a bold prediction right now. All right. I'm a little um, apprehensive, but I will make it. In 2021, malls in the Philippines will start to die off. We will see a um, we will see these malls slowly um, closing down because of well low rental and <clears throat> and I'm very sure some startup businesses that that uh, held a held office or held their business in a mall might might have been might have been a victim of this pandemic restaurants well will stay restaurants will stay relevant okay but i do not think they will um they will they will hold a branch in a mall the primary force that will make this prediction come true is fear okay people people by 2021 will still be scared to to go out and mingle to go to go to a mall okay to go to a mall particularly and well just do do what they usually do in a mall okay due to low rentals and low activity right <clears throat> malls make the most money when there is a high volume of human a, vol a high volume of humanity in their uh, in their uh, within their premises okay the more people are inside their mall the better okay so they so their tenants can tenants can serve them food offer them services uh, or just or just have them mingle with each other malls make money that way Malls make the most money that way, especially when they when they organize uh, concerts, shows within their within their premises. Oh yeah, the volume of humanity will skyrocket. If that happens, well, the mall makes money. If you're a mall, how can you make money when no one is coming in? Okay, how will your tenants pay you? If no one is well, if, if they got no customers, all right. So, well, I hate to say this, but I used to be a I used to be a mall rat in the late nineties and from the late nineties to early two thousands. I was I was a mall rat. Okay, I personally hate to say this. Or I personally hate this prediction, but that's the way I'm. That's the way I'm seeing it. A year from now. 
or six or seven months from now, malls in the Philippines will begin to die off. It'll send um, it'll send the mall industry here in this country into extinction. Okay, so well, let's summarize that a bit. For in order for um, if some of you if some of you TikTokers are clueless as to what I just said. In 2021, the extinction of malls will start. <laughs>